I'm Brent Peterson. I'm an evangelist for a solution provider, Wagento, and uh, for Mage Training. And I'm Derek Harlick. I'm the um, owner of Mage Training and a trainer, and we're uh, a dedicated merchant, um, Magento merchant training company. And we're here to talk about Magento 2. Yes. So um, we actually did this demonstration on Magento 1 about 18 months ago. Uh, we did it in London. Um, our, our theme was, or our, our title was Magento in 90 minutes. So the idea is that we get the Magento store up and running in 90 minutes with a logo and everything, and then you could buy something at the end. Um, uh, which worked, we ended up doing it in 68 minutes. Uh, it worked really well. And so we said, oh, we'll do it at Magento in the meetup in New York. Great, so we, 90 minutes, she said, well, we need to do it in 60 minutes. Okay, well, we tried to compress it into 60 minutes, and so great. So we, apply, we put our, our, our pitch in to do it here for, for 90 minutes, and they gave us 45. So we're gonna do the best that we can. So what we've done to cover that is that we're gonna, we, some of the things that we demonstrated, like uploading a logo, we're already going to have done that. Um, and we'll, we'll, if we have time at the end, uh, we will show you some of those places that we can do it. But if we don't have time uh, in the 45 minutes, you can ask us after. So just as a as kind of show of hands, though, just out of interest, is how, how many people here are using Magento at the moment? OK, so and how many people are using Magento 2? OK, so a lot of you, lot of you great. So for those of you who, um, who have never used Magento, obviously this is just a kind of product demonstration, if you like. Um, for those of you who are used to Magento 1 and uh, looking at Magento 2, we'll try and point out as we go through where things are slightly different and where, in most cases, things have, have been improved quite, quite a lot. Um, hopefully we'll be able to demonstrate that to you. Okay. Yeah, and I think some of the spots we're going to touch on, which is mainly products, you, you're going to find out that it's much easier to get products and much quicker to get products into Magento 2 now. Um, so my, my, I'm a little more technical, so my role is more of an architect, and, and I, I, I'm going to talk a little bit about hosting, Magento partners, um, and especially how we can get this version up and running very quickly. Um, so the idea is that um, we can have a, a version of Magento to use uh, out of the box, so to speak. So um, we're going to very briefly look at where to start, and, I'll, and, and we've kind of shortcut cut that part of it, um, so we've pre-filled in quite, quite a bit of the information, but I'll show you, I'll show you the, the main highlights of that. And then we're going to be really looking at the admin panel. And the main thing we want to look at really is all about the, the, product, the product catalog. So we're going to be looking at you know, how we go about configuring um, the categories. Um, I think there's some nice little new features in Magento 2 there. And we're going to be looking at putting in some products. In particular, um, we're going to go down the complex product route, so we're going looking at configurable products and we're gonna be looking at an import um, as well. So basically we've said to ourselves, we're gonna make this as difficult for us as possible to show you how easy it is. And it will be that easy. Um, we're gonna have a coupon code, we'll have some t-shirts that you can buy for free, and, uh, and then at the end we'll have some time for question and answer. Hopefully. Um, so the first time we did this was, I, I, like I said, in London. At the very last, last minute, Magento came in and said, by the way, don't do this. Make sure you don't do your presentation using the internet because who knows, we did it in the basement of some hotel in London, or motel, right? The Crown yeah. Plaza. Crown Plaza. Um, don't use you know, uh, the actual uh, interface for a browser or anything. And don't, especially don't have two presenters on, on one computer. And so uh, we broke all those rules. And uh, Derek doesn't know, but I'm, I'm going to go. We're off. See ya. See ya. OK. All right, I'll stay. Sorry. So OK. Actually. Um, yeah, so uh, the, the idea of this is that we have an install of Magento. Uh, in this case, we're getting the install from Nexus. Nexus is going to give us a control panel. They'll give us a version of Magento 2 running. Um, that gives you admin login, admin username. Uh, it gives you the ability to start your store right there before you do any stuff. So how easy is it to get that, that you can, installation? You're going to click on something on their website, start your install. Within a day, they're going to deliver you a working version of Magento 2. So there's no setup you need to do. It's very, it, very easy. And it's, it is, I mean, obviously, other hosting providers do that as well. And it, it's kind of, you know, someone's dealing with the infrastructure for you. So especially if you're new to, to Magento, um, you know, you're getting your infrastructure put in place for you. Now you can just get on with 
setting up a store. So that's where we're at at this stage. Yeah, so this is kind of the community version, and they'll actually do this for the enterprise version um, that will allow you to easily get up and running within a day. Um, so if, if you don't know anything about Magento and you're used to the old version or normal version of a website, Magento works on rewrites. It uses a database to make all the pages. So if you do look at the folder structure and the code, you're not going to see the paths that you'd see on the front end. That's all generated by the database. Um, if we do have time at the end, we'll get into some of the more technical parts of it. But I think this demonstration, what we're going to try to show you is what, as a merchant, you're going to use to make the website work for you. And that's uh, mainly through the admin panel. OK. So all starts with admin. So what we're going to do, um, we, we've done some basic setup on, on the system. We've, uh, we've put in details about where we're, um, I don't feel on the next slide, actually, where we're, um, where we'll be trading, so what countries we're going to be allowing our products to go to. Um, some quite important things to put in there as well. We've got basic store information. Um, it, it's that, and that literally is things like the telephone number of the store and the, and the name of the store. And this is reusable content. So we get it put in really early in the process. Then when we're creating our transactional emails or updating them, those telephone numbers are going to be correct. And down the line, if we need to change it, we're just changing it in the one place. So all of this stuff we've kind of pre-done on this particular store. Um, it's worth also pointing out that with this whole session, actually, it's, it's kind of more signposting, so some of this we, we won't be able to go to too much detail on. Um, it's also quite important that you, you have a think about the products you're selling. I mean, that seems like a really obvious, obvious thing to say, because of course you know what you're going to be selling. But thinking about it in the sense that, well, if I've got two different product types, so you know, let's say in the extreme I sell TVs and I sell shoes, well, the information that you need to supply in Magento for those two different products are going to be different. And um, it's worth kind of thinking about what you, what you want to present to the customer for those two products before you actually get started in putting your products into the, into the system. And we're also going to set up a very, very basic category structure as well. And I think in this demonstration, we assume that when you're going to make your store, you know what you're going to be selling in your store. So you, the 90 minutes that we originally denoted for this was, was actually including or after the fact that you've decided on which products you're going to sell. OK, so we're going to jump into, um, jump into the admin in a moment. Um, so what we're going to look at is putting a product in there. Now, there are several product types you can, you can put into uh, in Magento. Um, we're going to look at the, uh, the most common, or the most common two, which is simple product and configurable product, which kind of tends to, most stores tend to be based, based around those. Um, there are other product types. We won't, go, we won't delve too much, well, we won't delve into them at all in this session. So we're going to, and what we're going to do, start off with, is going to create a configurable product by hand. So we're going to go in and using the admin system, go through all the options and, and, and actually get the configurable product up and running. Um, and then what I want to show you as well is using the import facility to actually do the same job, but en masse. Okay, so let's... This right. is the part we're not supposed to do. Yeah, this is, this is where it gets edgy. So, um, okay, so we've got a Magento store. At the moment, we've got a very basic store, and we've just put a, a, a home page on there um, just, to, just to get us started. Um, and we have uh, our admin panel. Okay, so for those of you familiar with Magento 1, I'm sure everyone's, everyone's kind of had a peek at this already at some point, but it, it's changed. The admin panel has changed. Uh, and we have, um, you know, a slightly different layout, and some, some, of the thing, some of the menu items that you'll be used to might have changed position to where you're expecting them to be, okay? So most, I think pretty much everything that was in Magento 1 is in Magento 2. They just might be in slightly, slightly different places. And one, of the, one of the nice things about this is now you can use it on a tablet, so it's semi-responsive. It doesn't go all the way down to the mobile, but you can actually use it on multiple devices, including um, your tablet or desktop. Yeah. It's much friendlier to use now. Okay, so I'm going to start off. We're going to be starting off by looking at products. Now, again, Magento 1, there might have been a few more steps that I would have done before I, I dive in and start creating a product. But what I want to do, and I, and I might have still done those steps in, in, in the real world. In fact, I probably would do. However, I want to demonstrate that you can shortcut a lot of the elements that you might have had to have otherwise kind of do longhand in, in Magento 1. So I'm just going to dive straight in and create a product from the start. So good practice really should dictate that you create an attribute set for products and you, you create your attributes for them. But we're just going to dive straight in. So to do that, 
I go to the products tab and I go to catalog and that's where we can uh, see the products that we've got in our database. And if there is time at the end, we can talk about the other product types. There's downloadables, there's bundled, there's all kinds of different product types that we're gonna show or that, that are a, a possible, but we're just gonna go over two today. So if I go to the add product menu, just out of interest, there's a drop down there, and that actually shows you the different product types that you can, you can use. You don't actually have to use that though. In this case, we can just go straight to add product. So at this stage, it's kind of like, how does it know what product type it is? But hopefully all will become clear as we go through. So I just add a product. And in the previous version, what we do first is pick your attribute set. Absolutely. So yeah. you, all this, a lot of things had to be done in advance. Uh, this allows you to do a few more things on the fly. Okay, so what I've got in mind here is that I want to create a configurable product. And so what a configurable product is, it has a, it has, um, a product that re is represented on the front end that the client sees, and that's what they think they're buying, if you like. But actually, because it has different elements, in this case, it's going to be t-shirts with different colors, really, each of those products is a separate product. So those are simple products that sit underneath the, um, underneath the configurable. So I'm going to, this is what we're going to go through and show how, how we could create that. So the first thing I need to do is give the product a name. And a configurable product, a, a good way to think about it is a landing page of sorts for a bunch of simple products and it allows you to quickly choose a simple product. So as I type in the name, it actually fills in the SKU for me when I'm doing this for the first time. Okay, this is a new feature on Magento 2. Um, probably in this case, um, I'm, I probably don't want my SKU to be plain t-shirt as well. I want it to be kind of a stock number or, or something more um, representative. Boat t-shirt. Pardon? Boat. Boat t-shirt. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, well, we'll do a boat t-shirt next. Um, so we've then got a price. Um, I'm going to put a price in here, but you'll see later on that this price is kind of almost redundant. But I'm going to put one in here anyway, just for the time being. Um, and that's, that's something else that for those of you who use Magento 1, you will notice that in Magento 2, a lot of the things like um, the price can be independent of, of each of the options, so, which was something that was um, out of the box, wasn't possible in Magento 1. And then we come down and we have an image here. So I want an image to represent this product. So all I need to do is click on uh, the image and I've got a load of images in here. So I'm gonna pick this red t-shirt image and I hit open and now that's just gonna upload and then it will appear. Um, and you did yeah, skip over it. So tax is something that's configured in the, in the consistent setting and so we're not gonna get into that today but yeah. again, if there's questions after, we can certainly address those. I wasn't um, intentionally tax dodging then. I was just... Uh, just You're from England, passing. right? Yeah. It's just a prime minister who does that. So, um, uh, quantity, again, it's, it's, this is a configurable product. It's not, it's not um, relevant um, because that's going to be defined at the individual simple product level. And, and also the weight as well is, is not relevant for the configurable. So this is, where, this is one of the areas that's interesting. Is now I get to pick what category the product is in. So if I select this option here, it will present to me. So we can do categories on the fly now. We can, yeah, oh. yeah. So it presents to me. It presents to me the categories that are available in that drop down, and the only one it's showing there is the default category. So Magento one, I would either create the product and then go and assign the category, um, create the category later, and then assign the product to it, or you know abandon this, go and create the category, and then come back. But actually now we can create categories on the fly. So, so in the, yeah, in the previous version, you had to have everything done in advance and then, and then apply your products to those categories. So this is much quicker and much easier. Okay, so I select the category name and where, where, what its root is. Okay, so in this case, the default category because I want this to be at the top level. And I hit create category. Okay, and I'm just for fun, I'm just going to put another category in there. This time, I'll make it um, ladies and... When I select this, this time round, I've now got men's that I can also put this in, but actually I still want this to be in the default as well. So I'll put that in there. And then I hit create. And obviously it knows, because I'm creating it on the fly and I'm creating it within the product, it knows that that category should be assigned to the product. So it does that. Uh, and, and obviously in this version, the categories work the same. The only difference now is the management of those categories. It makes it much easier to manage them. And as every, I'm just gonna nick some, steal some copy here from a, Lipsum site. So all good products have a Latin description. So we put our description in. And so now we've, now we've created the basics of the product, okay? And, and that, that is kind of like the, the starting point. If, if you're used to Magento 1, you know that there's lots of tabs that you have to go in and out of to, to get, get the information 
to get the product live on the site. And now in Magento 2, that's all condensed into this one area. You still go and find all these advanced features, but it's, it's been condensed down. But now what I want to do is I want to create the configurable. So if anyone's got experience of creating configurables, there's a lot of steps in Magento 1. They cut it right down in Magento 2. So we have an option down here, which is the configuration. If I click on that, it allows me to create a configuration. And this is where I'm going to create my configurable products. So I hit that. And, it, and again, it's, and I'm liking this feature as well, where things are sliding in and out. So it's, it's keeping you in the same place, where again, in Magento 1, you were always moving to different pages. Um, so what we've got here is a list of attributes, OK, so questions about the products that can be used for configurable products. So the attributes being set in, up in a certain way, and it, and it will be presented to us here. So if we had more attributes like that, there would be more there. And the attribute is basically the way you're choosing your product on that category landing, or the, not the category, the configurable landing page. The attribute is the part that makes the, either a drop down or however you want to display that. So I selected the color attribute. And now it comes up here are all the values that are available in that color attribute. So when you create an attribute, you, 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 um, you list all the options that might be available. And you can see there's no options there. And again, I can create the options on the fly. So even though that attribute existed, um, it hasn't got any values in there at the moment. So I can now create these values on the fly. So I hit and create value, and I'll put in red. And then I select that button. I'll put in green. And as a store owner, these little steps, if, you're, if you've used the first version of Magento, these steps are, are very, very handy. Uh, if you're, first, this is, you're new to Magento, this is just some great features that are built in now. OK, so now I've done that, so it now, and I've ticked the boxes of the colors um, that, that I want for this particular product. So there might be, you know, I might decide that this particular product doesn't come in green, and that's fine. I can just untick that. Um, but now I've done that, it now knows that there's some more questions it needs to ask about, about these, uh, these elements. So I hit Next. It comes up with three options. OK, it's asking about the images, the price, and the quantities. And what it's saying is, so it's going to create as free products. It's going to create a red, a green, and a blue. And now it's saying about those products, how do we want to deal with the images for it? How do we want to deal with the pricing? And how do we want to deal with the quantity? And what I can do here for images is I can say, I want to apply a unique image for each SKU. For each of the new products I've created, I want a unique image. And I want that image to be based on the color. And what that does, when I select that, it now says, well, pick the, color, pick the image for each of them. So I just simply have to go through and say, for red, And as a, I mean, this, these are just some steps, too, that make it so much easier for the buyer to choose what they're going to buy. Um, and some, some of the hurdles that we had to do in the previous versions now are simply baked in. Same with the price. So you know, if anyone's familiar, again, with configurable on, on Magento 1, the price is based on whatever you set the price at the configurable level. So your simple product might be £100. But if your configurable sells it at £30, that's how much the customer buys it. Magento 2, the price is unique, is individual to each of the products. So what I can do here is say, well, I want to apply a uh, unique price, and I'm going to say the red is £35, the blue is £35, but the green is 40 uh, Sorry, dollars. Wrong country. Um, I'm not going to make you. We can do it in pounds. We can do it in pounds, but yeah. yeah that's uh, and the same with the, the quantity as well. So opening stock for this particular product, and I can now um, apply stock levels to it. And again, just choosing what the element is that we're doing that for. And this will be the opening stock levels for each of those products. So I'll maybe do 10, 20, and 10. Once I do that, I hit the Next button. OK, it gives me a summary of what we've done. And now I can generate the products. Now it's going to go away, create those products for me. OK, it's got them down there. I've also got this here where I could, I could look at this and go, well, actually, the SKU, I want the SKU to be different. And I can change that in line. Whereas, again, in, in Magento 1, I'd have had to go into each simple product and make that, make that change. Right, so I'm good with that, so I just save it. Now, this is a never, I, I really like, I, anyone who knows, knows me who's been on any of our training courses knows that I'm obsessed with attributes and attribute sets. And um, one of the most common um, problems I, I see with people who maybe haven't thought them through is that every product's in the default attribute set. And it's really easy to do that, particularly if you've got a new store. The great thing here is that it prompts you. So we haven't specified an attribute set for this product. Magento 1, it was the very first thing you had to specify. So now I can actually decide, well, actually, I want it to go in the default attribute set. 
never put it in the default attribute set. It's, uh, for me, it's the equivalent of editing the core code of Magento. It's like never put product in the default attribute set. Um, but um, so we can either create a new attribute set. So you know, I might I might not have a t-shirts attribute set. I can create an attribute set for that, or I can just add it to an existing attribute set. And as it happens, I pre-created a t-shirts attribute set just so we had one there. So I just have to select that there. And in the previous version, if you chose the attribute set, you had no way of undoing it once you've made the whole product. So that's it. Now I just uh, save the product. Oh, it's saving it for me, so I just slight delay there. OK, and now that product's available for me to have a look at. Now in, um, uh, I hope this hasn't timed out. It has, yeah, just quickly. Um, what will happen is in, in your live Magento store, there's a re-indexing happens probably every minute. Depends on how it's been set up. Um, just to speed things up, we're, um, uh, we're manually re-indexing, but yeah, you so will not need to do that. As you get it from your hosting provider, they will have set up your crons, which now Magento runs. The, the index is run automatically, uh, but just in this case, we're doing it just to speed things along. OK, so if I refresh my website, so this is the front end of the site, what we should now see is we've now got a men's and ladies category. And if I go into men's, we have a t-shirt there, okay? Click through to the t-shirt, and we've got this drop-down, right, which is fine. You know, that, that's kind of like, you know, quite often what, what, what certainly older Magento stores kind of um, contended with. But as we change the product, the, um, the color of the product changes. And you can see there as well the product that is, you know, product price also changes dynamically. Let's leave it like that. I like that. Well, we can make it even better. What? So... Magento 1.9.1 had swatches introduced. Really quite clever what they did with it, but it's quite complex to, to, to get a handle on it. They've, they've improved that dramatically in, uh, in Magento 2. So I want to enable this so that product has color swatches instead. So to do that, what I need to do is go and have a look at the color attribute. And that information is contained under this tab here, which is a new one, which is stores. And within that, we've got attribute options over here. So I'm going to go and have a look at the product attributes. OK, within there, we have the color attribute, which we'll use to configure the product. So looking at this attribute, there is an input type here called drop down. I've got two additional options on that. So I've got visual swatch and text swatch. If I change this to text swatch, you'll notice this bit down here, the manage options will change. Okay, so I change it to Visual Swatch. And as I go down, you can see that now we've got another option in there, which is what do we want the swatch to look like? And I have two options here. I can either, so if, if, if my swatch was, if I had a patterned T-shirt and we want to show the pattern, I could upload a swatch with that pattern and, and upload it there using the upload file. Or if it's just a block color, I can just use choose color. And there's a color picker there. So if I knew the hex number, I could just type it straight in there. Um, but what I'll do is I'll just roughly um, create some red. And this feature is great, especially using the hex number. It allows you to have a, a very large amount of colors with no uh, image overhead. It's not as easy on a mouse pad as it is with a, uh, a mouse. But we'll get there. So there's my, there's my colors, okay? And I just save that. Right, so now what we've got, when I refresh our product page, okay, we've now got color swatches there. Um, and also, if I go to the, the category page, you'll see not only we've got color swatches here against the product, but the swatches appear in the left-hand filter as well. And so some of the attribute items in there are very tied into the, the item you see on the, the left, the, la the layered navigation. So if we have time at the end, we can talk about that as well. OK, so that's, an, a doing, a, that's uploading a product individually. I want to show you what you do um, to actually use um, a spreadsheet. Um, so we have creates a spreadsheet, right? So this is a, whole, this is a whole session in its own right, so I'm not going to go too much into, into what's going on here. I'll just give you the highlights of what's going on. So we are creating um, free products, configurable products, and each have four different sizes, okay? Small, medium, large, extra large. 
To do that, what we have to do is, if I just scroll back over here, is um, create the simple products in the import. So each one of these lines is a product. So I have to create the simple products, and then I create a configurable product that ties all those products in, in the way that we did um, manually on the, on the uh, front and the back end there. And so I've got those products going through, and then within that, we've got things like you know, the price, the name of the product, and uh, the image for the product, and all sorts, okay? So this information is gonna be imported directly into, into Magento. And the easiest way to kind of come up with this spreadsheet is make two products and then export them. Yeah. Now you have a kind of a sample of what you're trying to re-import. One thing I do need to do though is um, in this particular product, so here's where it's defining what all the elements in this configurable, what all the, the, the products that make that up, and it's saying as well what is the attribute that is the, the um, configurable attribute on that. And on this particular product, we've got this attribute here, um, which is called t-shirt size. I, I know that, that that attribute doesn't exist in my system, so I need to create that attribute first. So I'm just gonna quickly go in and create that, create that attribute. Like I say, there's loads of information on there about uh, creating attributes, um, and, and we're gonna um, do a longer version of yeah. this, aren't we, yeah. And you will see, um, when you try to upload a spreadsheet, if the data's not correct, it's gonna warn you before trying to import it. Or if it's all good, it'll tell you it's all good. Okay, so I'm just gonna, through the product attributes, I'm just gonna create the new attribute, um, and it's called t-shirt size, um, and I'm gonna make it a drop-down, okay? And then I'm gonna add the options for it. So I'm just gonna add four options, which is gonna be small, Small, medium, and extra. Uh, so, I mean, the attribute is what really makes the Magento uh, products part, especially the most powerful, because it's, I mean, there's a theoretical limit to the amount of attributes, but you can have a lot of attributes that make up those products, and uh, it allows you to, to be able to search and index those products very easily. Um, just a top tip if you're creating configurable attributes, one thing, it, it, it's not obvious, it's not obvious just looking at this that you have to do this. Um, this scope here needs to be global. Uh, there's a reason why the scope's there. Um, I won't go into it here, but that, that, just so you know, that scope does have to be global for it to work. So I'll save that. Okay, and one last thing I need to do is I need to, these products I'm importing in, I'm importing into the T-shirt attribute set. So I need to make sure that, a, that the attribute set itself has that attribute in it. So I go into find the T-shirt's attribute set. And the reason for an attribute set is that you can have multiple products that some products don't have to have an attribute of other, another product. So this is a way of bundling those attributes to be able to import your products or add your products to the items that make sense. Okay, so what I did there was there was an unassigned attribute called t-shirt size and I just literally just drag it into the attribute set and save it. And now that attribute is available to me in that attribute set. Okay, so we're ready to import. So I'm just gonna use that file that I created and the import functionality is under the system menu. Um, for those of you who use the Magento 1 import, the Magento 2 import is actually quite a lot different, um, the, the actual import file, so it's worth genning up on that if you, if you do plan to do it, it works quite a bit differently. Um, I'm just gonna use the import option. And a, a, you know, another part that makes Magento so powerful is that there are a lot of extensions and there are some extensions out there that allow you to import very large sheets, you know, very large spreadsheets or large amounts of data, uh, but certainly the one that comes with Magento also is very effective. Okay, so we have our, um, so we're importing products. You can see there's several different import types, but it's products that we're interested in, and we're adding and updating products, so I'll choose that. Uh, and then I just simply choose a file that I want to upload, so if I just go back a, back a level. And one note that I would say too is that you, if you are using it to update a lot of products, I would make sure that you're only having the items on your spreadsheet that you're updating. A lot of times people want to update the entire, or they put everything in a sheet and just change them and then you find out that you may have something that's updating you didn't want to update. Okay, there's this um, option here which is image files directory. So if, if anyone who was using Magento 1, you know that you had to um, load the products into a folder media and then import. Um, in Magento 2, you upload the, the, the images to a folder in VAR, uh, or we are anyway, uploading it to a folder in VAR, and it can be anything, any folder you want. So we're uploading to a, just called a folder image import. And what we've done there is, on the server, we've just uploaded all of our product images in there, and then in the import, 
we are referencing here, uh, not there, sorry, um, here, base image, we're referencing what that image name is. And what that will do is when we import, it will look in that folder and it will kind of do the, do the um, upload of the image for us from that folder. Once the image is uploaded, we can delete that folder. Okay, so let's go back and do it. And so in that part is the part where you need FTP to get all your images on in bulk. Otherwise, everything so far we've showed you, you don't need, you don't need any access to the server through the, um, uh, through the uh, FTP or SSH. So what I just did there is I hit the check data button. So what happens then is the import is looked at and uh, it's checked that the data is valid, that it, it meets the, you know, um, if we've got an attribute that has certain criteria, that it meets that criteria and so on. So it looks at it and, and, it, and it tells us, it gives us information with this, if this import is, has got errors in there. And actually, and, and, and as well, something else that's a um, um, slight improvement is that there's, if, there, if you have got errors, it down, you can download a file that tells you where those errors are within the, uh, within the import. So this one's fine though, so I can just now hit the import button and now that it will import the products into our database. Or into our store, rather. Okay, import's done. So I can go and have a look at the products section, go to catalog. Oh, we need to re-index, but we've got within here products that have been uploaded, okay? So uh, let me just run the indexer. If anybody's seen our presentation before, I try to derail Derek with the jokes, and we've been rehearsing this so much, he's avoiding every opportunity that I have for a very poor joke. So this is my only chance. Um, Brent's jokes are so good that sometimes it can take you several days to get them, so um, it's... Uh, right, so um, we've now got those products in there. If I refresh this page, we've now got a whole host of products that are now in the system. Now, if I go into one of them, so I'll pick this one here. Again, we have a drop-down for the sizes, but a swatch might be better for it. So once again, I can just simply take so myself... Don't panic, we're going to use a swatch. Don't panic, we're going to use a swatch, yeah. So I go and find the attribute. Um, I'll just do a quick search for it using the filter. Yeah, the admin grid is also very much improved uh, compared to the previous admin grid. Okay, and this time around, when I look at the drop down, I'm going to show you, choose a text swatch. Choose a text swatch, and what I can do now is it adds this column in here. So instead of small, medium, large, extra large, I can say S, M. Okay, back to our product page. Okay, so we've now up updated that to be swatches. And what's great as well, and, and uh, you can have as many of these um, swatches as you want actually on the product page as well, on the uh, category page as well. So you can see here that we've got a mixture of color and um, sizes. If this came in multiple sizes, it'd have the color and size there so we can, we can select, select from that part. Okay. One last thing I want to do is I want to turn this attribute into a filter. So to do that. And the filter is the part that we have looked at on the category page where you have the items on the left that allow you to find those items and sort or filter by those items much quicker. Uh, and that really works if you have a, I mean, it works in this case, but it works really well if you have a large uh, uh, body of products that you want to try to filter down quickly. So we've got this option here, which is using layered navigation, so I can choose that. So I'm just gonna, either of those options, filterable with results or no results, will enable it to work. It just depends on whether you want options that return values or not showing there. So it's worth experimenting with that, see what works best for your store. Um, so I'm just gonna choose it with no, um, no results. And I just need to do, again, you know, you won't have to do this re-index, but I'm gonna, just to be sure. Okay. And now, hopefully, if I refresh this. Okay, we've now got two filters. And if I select something in the filter, so I can filter just down to products that are in medium, obviously, we've... Um, doing anything? Yes, it is. 
So we filter on products that are medium, and what it does is it, it will only bring back the products that come in the medium size, but it also pre-highlights the, the size for you as well. So it's kind of a nice, a nice little usability touch there, um, um, hopefully for, for that. So yeah, basically that's, that's the, adding of the adding of the products. Okay, so then I think we can, uh, we can add an attribute, I mean a, a coupon. coupon. Yeah. So there's a couple, couple more things that we would need to do, and, and again, we just don't have the time to, to cover this, but we'd, we'd obviously want to link the store to a payment method. Um, it's just getting simpler and simpler to do that. And, yeah, the ma major payment methods come with Magento, authorized.net, PayPal, uh, check. Uh, but that would be something you'd need in advance, uh, link it to, and then a shipping method is something, again, FedEx, UPS, the major ones come with it. So all those items, you would just need to have an account and you're ready to sell. Um, in this case, if we're doing a coupon and they want to pick it up, it's very easy to, to have that part done. Uh, and something else to consider is on the next slide, but, it, um, but something else to consider as well is the transactional emails that go out. So there's emails there that you would probably need to go in and customize um, just to make sure that you're sending out the right message to the customers. Yeah, the Magento does give you a great facility to make custom emails based on the transactions. Um, and it does give you the ability to do multi-currency, multi-country, uh, multi um, all out of the box. Uh, should we try to buy something? Yep, so what we're going to do um, is I'm going to put in a coupon code, which I've actually already put in there. So we've set up a coupon code for um, so under marketing. We have something called catalog price rules, which allows you to put voucher codes in at the end of the checkout process. You can do a lot more with it, but that's what we've, we've used it for. And the, this part is very powerful. It allows you to do a whole bunch of different things. Coupons or just catalog rules, sales by date, all, uh, sales by SKU. There's all kinds of... Uh, promotions that we can build, bake into this without having any programming. Okay, so we've put a code in here, which is this one, which is Imagine16. Um, so that's the, that's the code. And basically what we're saying in that code is if you put that in in the checkout, then the actions are that you get a percentage of the product price discount. In this case, it's 100%. Okay, so whatever the product price is. Uh, and, we're, you know, and then there's a limit to, to how, many, how many products a customer might buy. And this part down here restricts what type of products can, are eligible for that, and you, for that sale. And you can restrict the amount of coupons that they want for the product and how many times a user can use a coupon. Uh, so then in this case, uh, you can actually go to that domain right now and buy, and buy one of these uh, T-shirts for free. So I think we should try and put an order through. Yeah. So. so we'll do the Keep Calm shirt. And this, all this uh, that we're looking at right now is the default version of Magento. Um, we haven't added a color. We, we actually did add the, um, the logo, but in the, in the past, we've actually just added some styling for the color of the site, which gives you, you know, a uniqueness to it with, with very little knowledge needed. Um, So something else that's changed as well is that in the checkout process, the very first question you get asked is, is the email address. So from a merchant, a merchant point of view, that's great because that means we're capturing the email right at the beginning of the process. So if anyone drops out, then we've still got the email address so we can send them recovery um, emails. And what's also um, you'll notice maybe is different is that the discount code previously, you could only apply it at the shopping cart level. As soon as you got into the checkout process, oh, you, couldn't, you couldn't apply the discount code. I didn't. I didn't. Whereas now, you can apply any point during the, uh, during the checkout process. So hopefully, you know, making it more user, usable, user-friendly to the, to the so client. We have a t-shirt that we've applied a discount code and it's completely free now. Um, since we were doing um, a flat rate shipping, it's not gonna ask us for the shipping method. And there we have it, a completely sold product, which now we can go and look at an order. And one of the things you may or may not notice is right at the end of the checkout process, the customer has an option at that point whether they want to create an account. So it's just simply a case they can, they can click the button and create the account there. Rather than previously, it was right at the beginning of the process, they had to make a decision, do I, do I create an account or not? So you should find that more people will create an account, which has lots of other benefits as well. So right. there's, there's the order, yeah. And thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. All right, guys, thank you.